Hey guys, it's Ron. I uh, just want to do a real quick video on how to make a Cat5 cable. I've had a couple people come into my class that uh, are new to networking, so they've never had to make a cable before. So we're just going to do a, a real cl quick class on the tools that you need and uh, you know how it, how it kind of comes together. So in front of me, as you can see, I've got a cable tester. So this is a real cheap tester. Uh, obviously, I've got one better at work. Uh, this is like a, a $10 model. So not going to break the bank there. Uh, this is a real cheap uh, Cat5, so it does RJ45, but it also does RJ11. Uh, it's just a, a real cheap crimper that I've got here at the house. Uh, again, I've got one better at work, but for the house, works just fine. Uh, I carry a pair of uh, diagonal cutters. Uh, you don't really need those all the time. A lot of times the uh, crimpers uh, have a better end on it, and you can cut your cables there. Uh, since mine's a cheap pair, I tend to use a pair of uh, diagonal cutters better. You've got your RJ45 ends. Uh, ends come in all, all sorts of different uh, shapes. Well, not necessarily shapes, but slightly different configurations. Some of them have uh, holes in the end. So as you insert the cable, the individual uh, wires come through. So when you crimp it, it cuts the wires there. Uh, I kind of like the ones that don't have those, uh, but uh, you know, you you can choose whatever you know you like to use. Some of them have a, a separate piece that kind of holds your wires uh, so that they don't move as you're inserting them. Uh, me, I, I personally don't like them. This is simple enough for me. Uh, is typically what I end up using. So this is just standard Cat5e that we'll be using. Uh, it happens to be shielded. Uh, we won't be using shielded ends today, uh, but it, it's a good idea if you're going to go ahead and spend the money for shielded cabling, go ahead and buy an end that has the metal backing and the metal tab that fits into it so you can apply it correctly. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to move these out of the way. We're just going to do a real short little jumper cable today. So I'm going to cut off the length that I need. Alright, put the diagonal cutters out of the way. Got my Cat5 crimpers. One side has a blade, one side has two blades. Typically your two blade side is where you're actually going to cut the outer sheath with. Uh, the single blade side is, is going to cut the entire cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert through uh, the double blade side and I typically go a little bit past the uh, uh, actual crimper just so that I get a little bit of extra cable to work with. I'm going to apply light pressure just so it starts to cut the cable. I'll do a, a little twist and if I've done it all the way through as you can see it cut that outer sheath off. Uh, if you don't have shielded cables you won't end up having the foil and you won't end up having a little bit of, of wire in here that does the grounding. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that, cut that off. Okay, and now I've got my pairs out. Okay, so we're going to do a straight through cable. A straight through cable uh, typically uses the B standard. So the B standard is going to start with your orange. So I've got orange, white, orange. I'm going to do twist out the green. So now I've got green, white. I'm going to pull the green to the side because the blue pair is going to come up in between it. All right. So I've got blue and then blue, white. I'm going to put my green back. Orange, or er, white, brown, brown. Alright, so I'm going to slowly kind of pull them together. I've got 
I've got it pinched here in my left hand. With my right hand, I'm just going to kind of pinch it and twist it as I'm kind of pushing out a little bit. All I'm trying to do is work all the little kinks out of it. All right. I'm just trying to clean it up, straighten it out, but keep uh, a firm pressure, you know, pinching it so that, you know, the, the wires don't move out of order. I'm just going to keep going back and forth. And depending upon the type of Cat5 that you have, I've seen some that's stranded, uh, some that's not, you know, it's real easy to move. This happens to be some really uh, kind of stiff cables, so I have to work a little more than some of the other cables, uh, which is good and bad. It makes it a little bit harder to make the cable, but, uh, well, I'm not going to use my diagonals, but it'll make it easier when you go to insert it into the RJ45 connector. Uh, so that the ends don't move. So here I'm just going to end up uh, cutting off. So this is the single blade side. I'm going to insert a little bit in. I'm leaving a little bit on this side. And then I'm going to cut. Okay. So now they should all be the same length. Should be a nice clean cut. I'm going to take my connector. Okay. So this is the bottom side. I got my orange on the left. I'm just going to blow into it to get a little bit of moisture then I'm gonna go ahead and slide it in I'm just gonna be real careful about putting it in making sure I don't get it out of order and when I start seeing them start to go in their respective slots so that they're not binding I'm gonna check my color code again make sure everything's good and then I'm gonna walk it in there I'm just gonna wiggle it back and forth apply some pressure and what I'm looking for is on the end you'll be able to see that all the cables have gone to the end and are flush and then this outer sheath has moved up past a tab. So if you if you look at a, an RJ45 connector, it has a tab that's going to get crimped in on this back side. You want that sheath to pass it so that it grabs onto it and it keeps it kind of on there real well. Uh, if you don't do that, the connector you know can slide off. You can break you know wires. This will hold it real tight in there. Make sure it's going to be a good connection. Alright, so I'm going to slide it in the RJ45. This one's labeled 8 pin or 6 pin. So I'm going in the 8 pin side. Going to apply some pressure. Alright, so I've crimped the bottom and I've also pushed the pins uh, in against the individual wires. Alright, so I'm going to just going to do the same thing on the other side. Going to apply a little bit of pressure, rotate it. If you apply too much pressure, you can. Uh, cut into uh, the wires or you can end up cutting wires uh, if that happens you know just cut off a little bit more off the end and start over it's not it's not that big of a deal uh, usually a good idea you know when you're first starting out and give yourself a little bit of extra uh, length of cable that way you know if you do screw up uh, you're not throwing away a cable you're just gonna cut the end off and start over Alright, so again, straight through cable, so I'm going to use the B standard on this side as well. So I start with orange, white, orange. I have green, white. I twist out the blue. So then I have blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. I'm going to bring them together. Start the whole twisting motion over again. Making sure I'm pinching it real well so that I'm not uh, changing the order of the cables. When it looks good, it looks pretty straight. They're still in the right order. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess. So I'm leaving a little bit here to the, here on this side. Get a little moisture in there to make it easy to slide in. Check my color code. Make sure everything went in. It's not binding. And then I'm going to work it in. All right. Let's work it back and forth. Check the end. Okay, everything looks flush. Uh, my sheath is going to be just slightly past. I probably could have cut off a little bit more of the wire, but it should be uh, past the tab. Going to go ahead and crimp it. All right. Going to give the end a tug to make sure everything went in right. Everything's tight on there. And I'm going to bring out. My tester. 
All right, so this is a cheap little tester. Just going to go end to end. What we should end up seeing is uh, any pin that lights up on the top, we should have the same respective light on the bottom should light up. And that will tell us that it, it's a good straight through cable. All right, so let's see. All right, we have no ground because we're not using grounded ends. But all the pins line up. So that's, that's a straight through cable. All right, thanks for watching the video.